Teach Nepal, a true destination for self-learning. Naya Tatha Purana video haru herna ko lagi. Teach Nepal channel lai subscribe garna na bhuna. Hello and Namaste to the students and all our valued viewers. You are welcome to Teach Nepal. I am Bijo Nepani. Today I am going to present you the unit 4 of grade 11 compulsory English that is history and culture. In this video I am going to deal with with all the uh, things given there in unit 4 reading writing grammar speaking and um, all other things that are included there so in this short video you'll get to know about everything so if you are new here please don't forget to subscribe to our channel here we are going to deal about Qin dynasty Qin dynasty has a short duration uh, that uh, started from 221 BC and indeed uh, in 206 it followed the Zhu dynasty and you see Today, China, it is derived from the name uh, Qin, that is Qin, C H I N Qin, in the former Romanization system. Um, Qin Empire unified China for the first time in history. After the short background of Qin dynasty, the origin of Qin kingdom is given here. Zhu dynasty, Pasitian Qin. Uh, kingdom the Aikoncha, China, ma. and Jew dynasty resemble to feudalism in medieval Europe. Feudalism means the Samantabad, Jantar, like in Shoshan Garni, from which military and political control is spread there. Rathis Pashi, uh, so Bistari, Chin dynasty, like in Jew dynasty, like in Afno Boss, and Pariko, uh, it defeated there. My key point is highlight Garigo. So if we go through this, then it will be enough for you. The state of Qin became responsible for guarding the western frontier and they gradually moved eastward and eventually occupied uh, the original Jew domains. Then, when the Jew domain occupied, they go around the opposite friend by the marriage relationship in the Jew dynasty, the Qin dynasty. Many Chinese historians consider this event as a pivotal state of Qin. This is the Qin state, like a powerful one, like help. Of the many Chinese states, the Qin had the advantage of favorable, favorable location. Afno state ko favorable location pani thiyo, abasthi thi bani ramro thama thiyo, taaki aru kan state aur leche usmati war garna sakhiyon thiyo. Its territory, territory, it was guarded from the east by mountains and gorges, and it has easy access to North China Plain through the Yellow River. No major battle took place there. And during the war, states all the states in China were trying to draw more power and prestige to themselves. Afu afu state aur leche. Power, thay, ajum garna, power uh, um, the state of Qin and Chu were the strongest. So, Madhya Qin and uh, Chu thay, they were the uh, most powerful states of that time. Thay, uh, Qin dynasty ko apno benefit ko karne ko thay, they were uh, out of fear and they were able to expand their territory. Because of this benefit, such as the size of the Qin army and their expert use of chariot, when army ko use the soldiers ko use the they contributed to their success in warfare. This they became the most powerful states there, and uh, they uh, merged all the states. Pila Ju like say penetrate kare they won there and bistari or state or bani they included there. So Si Hung the Hung Di, the first emperor, he was there of China in two hundred twenty one BC. And uh, that Qin dynasty that time controlled the two third population there, and you can see uh, the achievements of Qin dynasty. Uh, so the practice of legalism is its peak in Chinese history. So even the body chain legalism, canon like it if palanagari ko sabhi manchar like onu sachit banai ko you chain mahatu pona bolabdi manchar Qin dynasty ko. Qin was lacking early on skilled intellectuals and politicians and therefore had to look beyond its border for talented people. China was a skilled politicians at the time, Padele Higuman, Novai Karnigoda, Sang Yang Lai, he was one of the foreign talent persons and he was there in the minister of the minister who post the era, Teraki Gonza, Rabuslezi, Sabi, Kosari law formulated Gadira, Kosari, Ital implement Gurni Vanera, Bana Gonza. Next important thing, the people throughout the empire were uh, now supposed to bear collective responsibility for each other. If a person didn't behave according to the rules, then others who were required to report him. So fear and controls were the key features of this political system. Another result of legalism uh, that was Si Hungri was the 
that scholarship was strongly suppressed and literacy denied to majority of population. Because they believe that uneducated people were easy uh, to control and so the people should remain stupid so that they would never think to doubt what uh, who was in charge of the empire bhaneko manche harla chai achichya athwa achichya diyena achichit nai banai rakhyo bhane unharu lai chai stupid banaunu sakinchha murkha banaunu sakinchha ra tinhar le hamro shasak ko ho athwa ke gariracha bhanne kura ma chai prashna gardenan bhaniracha they burn the books there and they executed the scholars scholar harla pani execute murder gareko huncha unharu le so in this way ke ramro kaam gare bhane unharu le naramro kaam pani tyo bela ma garirathyo but as a whole unharu ko legalism chai China is maintaining their position that in China. Later, the kings and emperors of China they were uh, all aware of the strong impact that legalism had on the efficiency and strength of the state. So legalism helped to create a superior army, um, a disciplined bureaucracy, an obedient populace, and the unquestioned authority of a strong central government. This bureaucratic model became the standard for Chinese government and it's still maintained in some form today. You know, you could have say, Mukhi achievement or in your say, legalism, let's say, superior army, discipline, bureaucracy, obedient, unsachit, and janta banana, collage, like, help career, strong central government form. Gana, like. Right, uh, but she's saying, because the end by the end of Qin Empire in 210 BC, Imperial Si uh, Hungari died on a journey through the realm. Right, and Jordan Mugai Gonsa, and but she's saying, Kibani Gonsa, he was there. Uh, to in charge of elixir, when you liquid of immortality, Apu Amar Unagulagi, Kailepani Namar Naglagi, Tuesday, or also the Makoji by name. So he, see Hungary, became obsessed with death and the hope of eternal life. When you go after Miltuk by teaching this bio, and in constant fear of assassination, it is said he never slept in the same room of his two nights consecutively, and he ordered the construction of his elaborate tomb, um, including his terracotta army of 8,000 warriors early on his. Brain, the cause of his death is still known unknown and after mid to the assassination murder the heat or icon sir was let's say every place ma every palace every room ma say he never slept there uh, consecutively for two days when you go a crowd you know my uncle at all come at the city but around sir but as a tool of the building when I like one sir at this matter 8000 army soldier racket a guard racket was it on sir because he was worried about uh, he, were, he was obsessed with his death किन भन्दा उसले आफूले चाहिँ जनताहरुलाई चाहिँ एकदम कन्ट्रोलमा राखेको थियो त्यसले गर्दा चाहिँ जनताहरुले चाहिँ विरोध गर्छन् भन्ने हिसाबले चाहिँ ही वाज मच वरीड अबाउट द थिंग देन थ्रू अ सीरीज अफ अफ स्प्रिंग्स एन्ड रेबेल अलायन्सेस द चीन अब त्यसपछि अब सिंगरीको डेथ भइसक्यो चीन अथोरिटी वाज ओभरथ्रोन इन द इयर 206 बीसी इन द क्यापिटल अफ शियांग द इम्पेरियल हाउस वाज मसाकर्ड एन्ड द चीन डायनेस्टी वाज दस एट द इन त्यसपछि सी हुँदै को डेथ भइसकेपछि अरु आएका इम्पेरियरहरु चाहिँ अलि विक पनि हुन्छन् त्यो भएर चाहिँ त्यहाँ चाहिँ चीन डायनेस्टी वाज ओभरथ्रोन देयर त्यसपछि चीन डायनेस्टी को चाहिँ ओभरथ्रोन भइसकेपछि देयर सु फट लियो बैंग अफ ह्यान्ड फर सुप्रिमेसी लियो बैंग इमर्ज्ड हिस्टोरियस फलोइङ जियांग्स यु डिफिट एट द बैटल अफ गाछिया राइट लियु बैंग वाज अपलोडेड एज त्यसपछि चाहिँ लियु बैंग चाहिँ त्यहाँको इम्पेरियर भएको हुन्छ आफ्टर द्याट देन व्हाट वर द लिगेसी लिगेसी भनेको के छाप छाडे त चीन डायनेस्टीले भन्ने कुराहरु लिगालिज्म ह्याड अ लास्टिङ इफेक्ट अन द इन्टायरिटी अफ द चाइनिज हिस्ट्री एउटा लिगालिज्म भयो हैन त्यसपछि टेरोकोटा आर्मी एउटा डिसिप्लिन आर्मी अथवा वाल म्यानर एन्ड द मोस्ट फेमस लिगेसी लेफ्ट बाइ द चीन डायनेस्टी द ग्रेट वाल अफ चाइना द ग्रेन क्यान क्यानल एन्ड त्यसपछि the roads which today link the cities of China and the countryside, these are the major achievements of Qin dynasty. So, it is not so much. 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 Because it is not going to be um, asked in the exam. I will tell you, on-scene text will be preparation just to After reading this text, you should be able to do the comprehension questions given there. Now, the vocabulary is given there. You need to match the words with the meaning i have matched it here i hope it's clear um, brevity lasting only for a short time conquest its victory and resemblance the state of being alike barbarian a member of uncivilized group of people or culture ali uh, it is the state unified to another 
by a treaty or league for a military purpose. Uh, similarly, here you can find another word that is nobility. And nobility means um, by the state of being noble in character, quality, or rank. And then ruthlessness, that means character ha having no passion or compassion. Next, we have number I, harsh, means cruel, or we call bad also. Elixir, uh, it is a liquid that is believed to cure all ills. So, in this way, you can do the vocabulary tax. You can consult the dictionary also uh, when you find, uh, when you have to do these kind of exercise. Now, it's homograph given there under vocabulary. Homographs are the words having the same spelling but different pronunciation and its meaning. So, here it's giving uh, the focus on the pronunciation of the words or the stress and you have been given some limericks also from humorous verses of five lines you can practice these uh, pronunciation consulting the dictionary also so you are asked a table you have been given a table and you need to fill up the data there the Qin dynasty and Zhou dynasty warring states have mentioned the date here you can see this thing in the right hand side uh, so i have clearly mentioned these things there And now it's the question answers. I have uh, mentioned the question uh, question answers in the slides next part. Question answers here. So I have mentioned the answers of each questions. Why is the Jew called a feudal age? The Jew is Jew is called a feudal age because the Jew government bore a strong resemblance to some of the form of feudalism. Next is what is the location advantage? Location advantage is because of mountain and gorges, like we discussed. And what contributed to the succession of warfare? Because of the borders, the size of the Qin army, and their export use of chariot. These were the things. And number D, why did the Qin invite the foreign advisor Sang Yang? The Qin invited the foreign advisor Sang Yang because Qin was lacking early on in its skill in intellectual and politicians. What are the key features? We have discussed the key features. They were the fear and control. Similarly, how were the people treated? It means they were, if they contributed, they were rewarded. Other way, they were punished. Why did Si Hung Dai stop educating ordinary people? Because he thought that stupid people were easy to control. They were easier to control. So they thought that, or Si Hung Dai thought that they should remain uneducated. And the league, uh, the achievements we can see superior army, disciplined bureaucracy, within populations, and uh, why did Hung Dai never sleep there in the same room because of the fear of assassination and the everlasting marks? They were the bureaucratic government, uh, legalistic policies, um, then terracotta army, the Great Wall of China, and the Grand Canal. These are the everlasting uh, marks. Now, after this, you have been given a writing task and you have to write um, an email to your friend living abroad about the contribution of Pratim Nan Shah as Pratim Nan Shah unified Nepal in 22 and 24 uh, uh, principalities into a single state or single country, uh, just like Qin dynasty. As email like no in the pattern, um, email like Takhara saying you have to uh, start with to uh, the from to and an email address like then. You have to write about this just like uh, later there uh, then after that political events the events or date lines and you have to write those things in paragraph and here under grammar you have been given regular and irregular verbs regular and irregular verbs and past simple past simple Peter uh, you have been given the regular and irregular verbs regular verbs and irregular verb regular verb present but past regularly change only one form they are regular and if one form changes and becomes different they are called irregular verb. for example right wrote irregular I know play played that's regular verb so here I have mentioned the uh, exercises of textbook grammar part 
uh, complete the text below using the correct past forms of the verbs from the bracket. Um, number A, B, C. I have written the answers here. The Maya established a very advanced civilization in the jungles of the uh, Yucatan. Right in this way, please find the answers. Next here, you have to choose the correct uh, correct verbs and write the uh, correct past forms there. And I have written the answers um, in the side that you can see. And next exercise here, number D, you can see here. Uh, again, you need to choose the, uh, you need to write the correct past forms to complete the following sentences given there. For example, I went to see the film, but I didn't enjoy. Instead of not enjoy, we need to write didn't enjoy there. Now it's a listening talks. Please listen to the audio and do the exercises given there. Throughout the world, there are ancient traditions that identify the center of the head as being synonymous with the center of the earth, the center of the universe, and the very center of creation itself. This center is often depicted as egg-shaped and is identified in some cultures as the third eye. There are multiple cultures that point us in the same direction. The Hindus have it as the third eye or the bindi. The Buddhists have the third eye on Buddha's forehead. We see symbology in Mesoamerica, which seems to symbolize its ability to contact and communicate with the higher spiritual realms using this secret symbol that is consistent throughout all the major world religions. When you talk about the third eye, it's about enlightenment. It's about this connection to the great unknown or the force of the universe. And we think that we are separated from the world when in reality we are all connected to every single object in the universe. And that inherently means that we are directly connected to every extraterrestrial being throughout the entire universe. Is it possible that the cosmic egg isn't only a symbol for the universe or how the universe was formed, but represents a connection that exists within each and every human to the cosmos and possibly to extraterrestrial beings that came to Earth in the distant past? Ancient astronaut theorists point out that while the third eye has historically been considered a metaphor, now finally, speaking part is given here. It's about narrating your travel experience or narrating your past experience. Here I have underlined the past verbs. Just like this, you need to uh, speak about your experience using the past tense. Here, travel, reached, went, scheduled. These are the, these are the past verbs. Just like this, uh, you need to speak about your past experience using these kind of past verbs. Uh, made here is also past verb. Uh, so here um, you have been given other verbs like moved, increased, seemed, reached, was. Now you need to narrate your memorable event with exciting experience you have had. In this way you can exp just speak uh, about these things. So this is the end of this lesson. Thank you everyone.